The next item of business is a statement by Kevin Stewart on ending homelessness together. The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And can we have our ten, up to 10 minutes, please, Minister? Thank you very much, uh, President Officer, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to set out our ambitious plans to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping. Uh, we have made significant progress in recent years in preventing homelessness, helping people before they reach a crisis. Homelessness applications have fallen by more than a third since 2010, with fewer families in unsuitable temporary accommodation. But we cannot be complacent. Everyone in this chamber and across Scotland has seen the rise in the number of people sleeping rough. This is frankly unacceptable in a country as wealthy as ours, and we simply are not willing to accept this. In our programme for government, the First Minister set a clear objective to eradicate rough sleeping. She also committed to renew and redouble our efforts in preventing and re reducing homelessness by establishing a Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group, creating an Ending Homelessness Together Fund of £50 million over a five-year period, and investing an additional £20 million in alcohol and drug services. One of the most important pieces of legislation this Parliament has passed was the Homelessness Act of 2003. I'm proud of the fact that Scotland has some of the strongest rights for homeless people in the world, helping many people who become homeless back into settled accommodation and a stable home life. In the last few years, much has been achieved. A 39% drop in homelessness applications since 2010 and fewer families in unsuitable temporary accommodation like bed and breakfasts. This government has also invested heavily to ensure Scotland has a new generation of affordable housing. With 69,000 affordable homes delivered, an end to right to buy and more homes on the way. All this helps provide warm and affordable homes and reduces homelessness. But more needs to be done to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping. And we need to recognise the causes and address the causes too. We know that the UK government's programme of welfare cuts are making things worse, much worse. We have heard the evidence from homeless people, charities, and just last week from the UK's National Audit Office who concluded the rise in homelessness across the UK is linked to the UK government's welfare cuts. From the freeze on benefits to the benefit cap, from the changes to the local housing allowance to the imposition of the bedroom tax, we have seen a series of harsh cuts made to the support people on low incomes rely on to keep a roof over their heads. And the deliberate six week delay before getting your first universal credit payment will make life even harder for some of the most vulnerable people in our society. The choices, and they are choices, that the UK government has made aren't just morally wrong, they're also economically wrong. Pushing people into crisis, into homelessness, impacts on public and charitable services and serves as a barrier to those seeking to work or keep a permanent tenancy. We know that councils and third sector organisations provide life-saving and vital support. And we want to do more to support what works and ensure uh, the joined up approach people need. So the time is right to build on our strengths and raise our ambitions. We must work together to ensure our homelessness services have good links to other services, particularly mental health and addiction services. The £20 million announced in the programme for government for drug and alcohol services will boost capacity in the system. Close joint working across housing, social care and health will be crucial in maximising these additional resources to ensure this supports people with some of the most acute need for joined up support. Also important is our commitment to transform the use of temporary accommodation, ensuring that this vital safety net works as well as possible for those who need it. We want our system to be a safety net that provides high quality, safe and temporary accommodation to those who need it 
in a crisis situation. To that end, from October and following parliamentary scrutiny, we will reduce the time spent in unsuitable accommodation for households with children and pregnant women. Our commitment to deliver 50,000 affordable homes over the course of this parliament will also play a significant part in reducing homelessness. But we know that housing itself is only part of the solution for many people. To meet more complex needs, all of our services must be better aligned. Ensuring stronger links between housing, mental health, justice, addictions, children's and young people's policy and the care system will all be essential to this endeavour. This is crucial to improve prevention and deliver better outcomes for those that feel they are stuck in a cycle of homelessness and poverty. To achieve our aims and ambitions, as stated in the programme for government, we are taking forward two major initiatives. Firstly, we're creating an end Ending Homelessness Together Fund of £50 million over a five-year period to support homelessness prevention initiatives and to pilot solutions to deliver results. This su substantial increase in funding demonstrates our absolute determination to tackle homelessness as a crucial part of building a fairer Scotland. Secondly, we will establish a short-term homelessness and rough sleep sleeping action group to lead change and improvement in this area of work. It will develop recommendations and the actions, services and any legislative changes required to end rough sleeping and to transform the use of temporary accommodation. President officer, I'm pleased to announce today uh, that the chair of that group will be John Sparks, chief executive of the homelessness charity Crisis. I recently met with John and we agreed that there are four questions for the group to consider. What can we do to minimise rough sleeping this winter? What can we do to eradicate rough sleeping for good? What can we do to transform temporary accommodation? And what can be done to end homelessness in Scotland? This group will first meet in early October, drawing its membership from the public sector, third sector, social enterprise and academic experts in this area. John and I are clear that this group will be focused on solutions. We will of course also ensure that the findings from the local government uh, committee's inquiry and homelessness are taken into account, both in the context of the rapid work to be undertaken by the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group and in the longer term work of the Homelessness Prevention and Strategy Group. The committee's exploration of people's experiences of accessing homelessness services and the underlying issues that can, can contribute to housing problems will be valuable in developing the solutions needed to achieve our collective ambitions. During my time as Minister, President Officer, I've spoken to people experiencing homelessness and housing professionals. It's clear to me that to achieve our aim, we need services which really place the person at the centre and treat them with the dignity and respect that they deserve. And that is why I've asked John Sparks to ensure that talking to people with direct personal experience of homelessness is central to the new group's work. The role of councils will also be crucial, helping people access their, their rights need commitment from all levels of government, particularly against the background of austerity and welfare reform. So we will continue to work positively and closely with COSLA and councils through the existing Homelessness Prevention and Strategy Group, which is jointly chaired by the Scottish Government and COSLA, to understand how we can support councils to deliver their stat statutory duties on homelessness and go even further to realise our ambitions. Eradicating rough sleeping and tackling homelessness is about individuals. It's about their fears and challenges, but also their hopes and their aspirations. It's the right thing to do both for those individuals, for our communities and for all of our futures. Building on existing strengths and learning from successes such as Housing First and multi-agency partnerships 
provides a huge opportunity to take action, to reduce homelessness and to improve outcomes for some of the most vulnerable people in our society. It is an opportunity we must seize, channeling the determination, wealth of ideas and passion on this issue across Scotland to make lasting change. Success, presiding officer, will rely on all of us working together across the homelessness sector and wider than that too, to take focused action and dr drive relentless program, progress towards this ambition. Thank you very much, presiding officer. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement, and I call Graeme Simpson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement? Um, his conversion to a sort of national strategy is long overdue. This is a major issue which concerns us all and shouldn't be happening in a modern-day Scotland. Shelter Scotland claim that every 19 minutes a household in Scotland becomes homeless, a shocking statistic. We have a homelessness crisis and preventing it will save money in the long term. Now, I do welcome the fact the Minister has committed to working with the Local Government Committee, who are doing uh, our own inquiry into homelessness. Um, I do welcome the formation of the strategy group. It's certainly a start. But can the Minister say, who else is in the group? Will shelter be there? If not, why not? How was the £50 million figure arrived at? How long will the group run for? When will they report? And if they first meet in October, how are they going to meet, make even the slightest dent on rough sleeping this winter? And while cutting time in temporary accommodation would be most welcome, what is the target for that? Kevin Stewart. Uh, a number of questions there, presiding officer. Let me uh, start with... Uh, the, the reason for this group. This group is about taking action on rough sleeping and homelessness and taking it as soon as possible. Um, Mr Sparks and I, presiding officer, are, are quite clear um, that one of the first questions that has to be answered, as I said, is what do we do uh, during the, the upcoming work winter to support uh, folks uh, who are currently uh, rough sleeping uh, to make sure that they are right? Uh, and to make sure that the current um, uh, shelters that we have in the country um, are able uh, to deal uh, with all of the difficulties that folk face. So that's question one. The action group itself, as in the name, is a short-term action group. And Mr Sparks is deter as determined as I am uh, to get answers to those questions as soon as possible. Uh, and they will report back um, mid next year. The group itself will be made up of a number of individuals, as I pointed out in my statement, uh, from across areas who deal with homelessness at this moment in time, from, uh, look, from public bodies, um, from uh, the third sector, uh, from academia, uh, from folk who have lived experience of homelessness. That group will encompass a wide range of knowledge and a wide range of views. I can assure uh, Parliament, presiding officer, that we will announce uh, the membership of that group uh, as soon as we have confirmed uh, with everyone who is being asked to join it that they can take part in that group. Pauline McNeill. Thank you. I welcome much of the Minister's statement and uh, I believe it's about time that there was a national strategy on homelessness, so there's much to welcome. Uh, we will also work with the government 100% to halt the rollout of universal credit and the six-week delay. We are with you on that. But not all the figures, Minister, are going the right way. Homeless applications are going up 10% where applicants slept rough the night before. So will the Minister accept that rough sleeping is going up and not down. Night shelters report that there has been a 94% increase in the last two years and charities are playing the role that government should be playing. So will the minister accept that rough sleeping has to be a priority? The role of local authorities, which is uh, welcome in the statement, is crucial. 
But I'm sure the Minister will recognise that there has been a cut to local authority budget since 2011 of £1.5 billion and £170 million only last year. So will the Minister commit to protecting local authority budgets which are stretched to deliver on homelessness? Because without local authorities, we cannot deliver. I welcome wholeheartedly you must the comment on the, close, on the Housing please, First McNeil. model and I would hope the Minister could report back on that as soon as possible. Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and I certainly uh, welcome uh, Ms McNeill and the Labour Party's support on universal credit, uh, because I think that having to wait six weeks um, for any payment whatsoever could really destroy uh, people and their families uh, while they have to wait. And I really do think uh, that the UK government has much to answer for in terms of its welfare pr reform proposals, uh, which have been extremely damaging. Uh, and I think the National Audit Office report itself, which highlights the fact that uh, initially uh, the Department of Work and Pensions did no analysis on the impact of housing benefit reform shows this. And then the subsequent research that they commissioned, which was at the instigation of opposition parties, um, it, it did not sh establish uh, how many of the households that were now homeless uh, would not have been homeless if it hadn't been for those reforms. So the analysis itself was probably not worth the doing. And I would urge members to read the, the National Audit Office report, which is absolutely damning about the UK government's uh, situation here. Can you um, hurry along, please, Minister? Uh, uh, President Officer, I, I know that I, there are many areas to cover, but I will let's turn to um, Housing First. Housing First has worked uh, in, uh, in Glasgow. It is working in other areas now. There is joint up working, which is not termed as Housing work First, which is also working extremely well. Uh, I think that we should learn from these exemplars uh, and do what we can to ensure that local authorities have the knowledge uh, to instigate Housing First and other such schemes in their areas. Well, we, we are pushed for time. We have less than 15 minutes, so unless people are succinct, uh, folk will get missed out. Can I have Bob Doris followed by Alexander Stewart, please? Thanks, Presiding Officer. Uh, in relation to Housing First, Turning Point Scotland are actively involved in piloting the Housing First model, and their initial evaluations evidence 50% of participants demonstrating sustained positive change. Can I ask the Minister how the Scottish Government can assist with potentially upscaling the Housing First model, a significant upfront expense, but in the longer term may actually both improve outcomes and save public money? Kevin Stewart. Uh, I thank uh, Mr Doris for his question, President Officer, and for his interest. Um, the upscaling of Housing First, as Mr Doris has rightly pointed out, is being piloted in Glasgow, uh, where it is to replace supported accommodation. Uh, and we will look to the experiences there and elsewhere in Scotland where Housing First is being tr trialled uh, and decisions will be informed by those experiences. One of the most interesting things that is going on at this moment is analysis in Renfrewshire uh, who are, are doing uh, analysis in terms of costs, in terms of implementing Housing First. And I think that uh, it will be shown that Housing First is a spend to save proposal which will actually save the public purse. But beyond that, it will be getting things right uh, for individuals uh, who actually need that help. So it's not just about the cost of the public purse, it's about the human cost of not doing this properly. Alexander Stewart, followed by Gail Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The role of councils will be crucial in this process. What can the Minister say to reassure us that frontline staff will be trained and given the resources needed to assist with prevention? Kevin Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, as part of our housing options work, which has been ongoing, uh, which is to spread the wealth of knowledge and to export best practice, uh, government has committed uh, to uh, bringing forward uh, a housing uh, options toolkit, uh, which will help uh, frontline staff uh, deliver what is required for each individual. Now, over the course of the summer, I've met with a number of organisations uh, including uh, youth organisations uh, like uh, LGBT Youth Scotland's Homelessness Commission and Off the Streets and other organisations to make sure that that toolkit itself contains all of the right information and that folk who are working in the front line know of the experiences that they are likely 
to come across on the front line. Beyond that, uh, presiding officer, I think the key thing is that exporting of uh, good information and best practice. The housing options hubs are doing good work in that area. Uh, I would be happy to discuss that further uh, with Mr Stewart when he meets with me tomorrow. Gail Ross, followed by Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister will be aware that homelessness can often be hidden in remote and rural areas where we might not see as many rough sleepers, but things like sofa surfing are a huge problem, particularly for young people. Can I confirm that the Ending Homelessness Together Fund pilots and initiatives will take into consideration the unique challenges of rural homelessness? Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, the Short Term Action Group will be looking at a range of issues relating to rough sleeping and homelessness drawing on all of the available evidence and the views of people with direct experience. And I certainly recognise the particular challenges of rural homelessness, uh, where homelessness exists but may not be as visible as it quite often is in urban areas. One of the key priorities for the group and for the fund uh, is to help address the complex issues that we face no matter where we are in Scotland, so I can uh, assure uh, Ms Ross that we will the group will certainly be looking at, at this uh, and will be getting to grips with the understanding of the problem of hidden homelessness, including sofa surfing, uh, as Ms Ross has mentioned. Elaine Smith, followed by Andy Whiteman. Thank you, President Officer, and I'm pleased the Minister's recognised the work being undertaken by the Local Government Committee. The number of children in temporary accommodation increased by 16% last year. What plans does the Scottish Government have to make sure we don't see this number increase further? Kevin Stewart. President Officer, um, one uh, family or one pregnant woman in unsuitable te temporary accommodation is one too many for me. Um, we have at the moment 82% of families or pregnant women who are in temporary accommodation in the social rented sector. Um, and not having to rely on another means. And I want to see that um, figure expand. 82% um, is not good enough. And the um, action group will look at this in some depth. As I said in my statement, we are going to bring forward um, uh, the changes to the unsuitable accommodation order, uh, which will reduce uh, the uh, use of an inadequate temporary accommodation from 14 days to seven days. That will uh, uh, be under parliamentary scrutiny in October uh, and we should initiate that quite quickly after that. Um, I know that uh, Ms Smith has a great interest in this issue. I've met with her previously about this and I'm more than willing to do so again if she wants to talk in further depth, presiding officer. Andy Whiteman followed by Philip McGregor. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Minister reminds us in his statement of the commitment to deliver 50,000 affordable homes and claims this will play a, quote, a significant part in reducing homelessness. Given that there are over 100,000 people on housing waiting lists, can you explain precisely what part the 50,000 homes will play in reducing homelessness? Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I would remind the Chamber that not everyone who is on a waiting list at this moment in time is homeless. Um, folk are on the waiting lists for various reasons, for transfers to uh, increase the amount of bedrooms or to reduce the amount of bedrooms, and not everyone uh, on that list is homeless. However, uh, this government over the piece has already delivered 69,000 affordable homes since it has taken office. The 50,000 affordable homes target, 35,000 of those for social rent, um, has been recognised as the most ambitious house building programme since the 1980s. Uh, we have also put our money where our mouth is in this regard, with investment of over £3 billion during the course of this, uh, uh, this term in Parliament, uh, and we will do all that we can to increase that supply. But I would ask folk to, to remember that not everyone uh, on a, a waiting list at this moment in time is homeless. Fulton McGregor, followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister give an assurance that the push to reduce temporary accommodation will not be at the expense of moving people with other issues that should be addressed in advance of finding a permanent home, such as debt, ill health or leaving an abusive relationship, and that we will not be replicating areas of England where you cannot refuse an offer of suitable settled accommodation? 
Kevin Stewart. Um, President officer, I think that's a very interesting question from Mr McGregor. And I, my initial response is yes. We want uh, time and temporary accommodation to be as short as possible. But I've been clear that the time there needs to be used positively to identify appropriate sustainable solutions. And I'll give a, a, an example. You know, I think we've probably all had constituency cases where folk have gone into temporary accommodation, social housing, where they have been a, made an offer of permanent accommodation elsewhere, which is not suitable to their needs because they would be missing out on the family support um, that they require or other issues. Uh, and I think it would be wrong for us to, to set a limit on the amount of time and temporary accommodation. I think it's much more important that we actually find the right solution uh, for families at the very end and take cognizance of what they have to say rather than follow the English line uh, as Mr McGregor uh, has pointed out. Mike Rumbles followed by Jenny Gilruth. Does the minister believe that spending just um, 10 million pounds a year for the Ending Homelessness Together Fund out of the £31,500 million pounds in the Scottish budget, is really the step change we need to end homelessness? Kevin Stewart. I would point out to uh, Mr Rumbles that I've just mentioned the £3 billion pounds that we're investing uh, in housing over the course of this parliament. Beyond that, this £10 million pounds per year, £50 million, pounds, is additional money. There is already substantial sums spent on homelessness throughout Scotland. And if memory serves me well, um, I think at the Glasgow Homelessness Summit during the course of the summer, uh, they estimated that they were spending something like £73 million pounds on homelessness. This is additional money uh, which we are we're putting our money where our mouth is. We've established um, the, the action group uh, and we've actually put a budget in place uh, before the action group has, has, has actually met. That, I think, shows uh, our ambition to uh, eradicate rough sleeping uh, and to ensure that temporary accommodation becomes better. Jenny Gilruth, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can the Minister outline his response to reports that half of all council tenants across 105 local authorities in receipt of universal credit are in housing arrears and how that will impact on future homelessness? Kevin Stewart. Well, I thank uh, Ms Gilruth for that question. I refer back to the National Audit Office report, uh, which was published last week, which quite clearly shows uh, that these daft, uh, morally wrong, uh, welfare reforms are having a major effect on people right across the country. And it's not just universal credit. It was the bedroom tax, which we managed to uh, mitigate, and a number of other areas uh, of business where, you know, quite frankly, the UK government are failing in their duties. And beyond that, they know that they are wrong uh, because they will not analyse what they are doing properly. It's just Let's follow this policy line and beggar the consequences. Well, I think that that is un uh, unacceptable. And I think that this parliament does and that the people of Scotland do too. And the sooner that we have control over all benefits, the better. Ryan Whittle, followed by Ben McPherson. Delighted to be following that rant. Um, will there be a focus on pre-crisis intervention where the, where the potential for homelessness can be identified and addressed early? And in part, will that require cooperation between government departments? Kevin Stewart. I think that, you know, if we are going to take a collective view in terms of dealing with this, uh, the Tory benches should listen to what I've had to say uh, around about social security because at the end of the day a huge amount of the difficulties that we see across Scotland are folks who have been hit with sanctions or who have had their benefits cut or capped. Now, I just I, I refer you, um, uh, presiding officer, to a meeting that I had in Glasgow earlier on this year, where Glasgow City Council are identifying those folks who have been hit with a benefit cap, who are in, uh, in the private housing sector, and trying to um, get them to move to the social housing sector in order for them not to enter into any crisis situation. It would be much better if that benefit cap was not in place because neither Glasgow City Council or other services would have to pick up the pieces that have been made, have been made by the Tories. 
come to the last question fairly quickly. Please, Ben McPherson. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether the Homeless and Rough Sleeping Action Group will examine particular housing challenges that exist here in Edinburgh, including the harmful and increasingly harmful impact of UK Government welfare cuts. Kevin I thank the member for his question, President Officer, and I know that Mr McPherson has taken a great interest in the issue of homelessness um, in Edinburgh, and I'm very pleased to be able to speak at a reception he's hosting tonight for the Rock Trust. Uh, the short-term action group will identify actions required on rough sleeping and homelessness across Scotland, as I've said before, and we will draw on all of the research and evidence available to find solutions. We know that there are particular challenges in our big cities, including Edinburgh, and we also know that this has led to the Council and their partners, such as uh, Health, working to develop, together to develop innovative and positive practice here in Edinburgh. Uh, particularly for those with more complex needs. Uh, beyond that, uh, we have seen initiatives such as the Social Bite Village come to fruition here. Uh, and the new group uh, will help uh, uh, identify what new practice exists. And as I've said earlier, try to export that best practice right across the country. Um, uh, and I hope uh, that members will see uh, real differences quite quickly from the work that the action group uh, will be taking. Thank you. That concludes questions on the Minister's statement on ending homelessness together. And we will move on to the next item of business. I'll give everyone a minute or so to change the seats appropriately.